Hello, hello there, and we are live. See ya, ladies and gentlemen. See ya. Um, lately, yeah, on this channel, there haven't been smiles, yeah. But see, of course, if you go to other channels, you know, they're all smiles, they're all laughing, you know, they're all hopeful. But see, yeah, a Daniel has come to judgment, yeah, mostly oh. for me, yeah. I'm tired of giving people false hope about right about the arsenal and and what we can achieve it's done it's finished uh let's just prepare for next season that's all i would say but before i make uh, uh you know this pronouncement yet see i got my brother on episode 31 guys episode 31 yeah on this channel see ya it's the darling cloud show with my partner, my brother, my friend, you know. See, I know other person than Oregon, Dow, DVS, Guna, Tracy, everything. Every name you can think of, that's his name. <laughs> my brother, that's man, welcome to the show, man. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Paul, 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 let's get into it. Oh, oh, oh. Happy Tuesday. I know it's been a long couple of days for us. Um, it'll be... I'm afraid a, a very, very long week because um, I don't have my hopes held high for tomorrow. I'm uh, si silently confident. Silently confident, which means not very. If I was really confident, I'd be, yeah, we're going to go in there. We're going to go smash them 3-0 or 4-1 or something like that. That's not going to happen. Again, the dark cloud remains above Arsenal Football Club. The dark cloud that we cannot shake mm. when it comes to this part of the season. We look, we look dodgy mm. at the beginning. We look flawless mm. in November all the way to about the middle of March. Yeah. Right? I mean, it was it was great. We were top at Christmas. We were, you know, four goals conceded in 2024 before the last couple of weeks. We were looking like a freight train, bro. And here we are at a, uh, at a big stop in our – path to um lifting a trophy yeah i want to i don't uh, want to just quite sorry Tony. i just want a second uh, i just want to um, address you know our, our guy moss sports i'm not going to talk about bottle i realize there's 18 points left to play for and i know things in football have been crazy so i don't want to go to bodily in the league but we have to talk about byron Mun shooting first because that's what we got in front of us Oh, oh, okay, let's start, from, let's start from this angle, yeah? Big up to the people in the chat, yeah? Most sports world is saying, anyone talking bottle, I am oh. listening to you. Good, good and okay, no problems, man. Yeah, I you like know? that comment. And again, that was a, that was a question, uh, you know, but again, I, I don't really care at this point, you know, what anyone says, you know, about, you know, about anything, you know, right now. Um, John Smith says hello. John Smith has been quite confident about you know where her stance has been since this season. You know, right? She said that Mikel Arteta can get us over the line, and and you know the mistakes of what happened last season is creeping into what we have right now. So again, we'll touch into that. Big up to John Smith who is down here, and um, of course Oregon Guinness says here, hey Joanne. And of course, our brother and friend Drew Gunners is down here with us. He says, Good and been there. You know, so on that own head down. Big ups to you, man. How you doing, Drew, man? That's yeah. our brother, man. Yeah. Go subscribe to Drew's channel. Yeah. Get him over the line. Yeah. His gaming channel. And of course, John Smith, she started with the offensive already. She says, Are we ready to watch the ringmaster and his clown tomorrow? But Joanne, I'm not watching that game tomorrow, but not because I don't want to watch. I have a game to ref, so I'm not going to be in that, uh, you know, doing the watch along or even watching that game because I don't want to watch anything that has to do with that game. I'm sorry. I feel we're going to be beaten. We're going to be disgraced mm. in Germany. I don't want to be a part of watching that to to this football club. See, I'll go straight to you, Dal. Ekene. Ede is down here with us. And of course, Drew Gunners is doubling down, you know, on it. He says, 
you butchered that German, oh, Germany. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it. Yeah, exactly. I butchered it, man, because right now I'm not even butchered Harry Kane. My brother, my, yeah, hopefully. Let's see. See, uh, um, uh, Ogden Gunnar. Yes, sir. Talk to us about, because we'll still go into that by Munich, you know, this is a preview mm -hmm. show. But again, uh, take me through, yeah, your thought process about that matchup against Aston Villa. Because uh, I see people out there, yeah, I see many yeah. podcasters, yeah, many Arsenal fans, many Arsenal YouTubers, they've moved on. Mm. Uh, uh, they've on. It's easy uh, like do. it's on to the next one. They've all moved on, and I'm like, I'm sitting here and I'm like, thinking, hey, like, I want this team to win a title. I want right. this team to win the Champions League. I want this team to win the the Premiership title. How yeah. can I move on from what happened? That last weekend, when what happened last weekend dealt us the biggest blow to our title credentials this season. Right. Make that make sense, Oregon Guna. Talk to us. Well, it makes perfect sense because, you know, Henry came in and set, set, set him up just like uh, Thomas Tuchel did with Bayern Munich. He played the player in the gaps, just waiting for us to make mistakes. And, oh, you know, and of course, played too far up front. Gabrielle caught out. Rice caught out again. A couple times. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of like what I, what I feel, Tony, uh, really is that the players are tired. What I, what I saw was a, a really good first half. Of course, it just didn't go in the net. Troussard should have put that one, you know, near post instead of going right by the keeper's legs or far post, whichever angle I guess you want to look at it. But the thing is, is that we started off well. Right, we started off well. I thought let's start off okay. Yeah, yeah in the first forty five minutes. Give yeah, the pressing was good. You know, there's communication out there. We looked we looked pretty solid. Um, and then I think of course when things don't go to plan, right? The plan was to push them, push them hard like we did. Hopefully bag two or three goals. It should have been four. It should have been four nil if we were even, you know, somewhat accurate and you know precise with our finishing. Again. Don't need a striker, I guess. Whatever, you know. If this is what we're, if this is what we're satisfied with, then yeah, we don't need a striker. So a lot of it too goes back to January not signing anyone. But that's another story mm. for another day. Forty-five yeah. minutes, great. I don't know what he was telling them at halftime. I, I, did he tell him to take his the, the, our foot off the gas pedal? Because what we saw was a completely different Arsenal side in the second half. Either Arteta our, our told them so. Cloud as shit, or Unai Emery actually had a, a very secure plan for them in the second half, which is, I think, it's the latter because they came out and they literally battered us the second half. They played us off the pitch on our own patch, you know, our own patch. Uh, our we own former manager, Paris. That's the fact. That's the fact. Many Arsenal fans aren't talking about. Yeah, they're just looking yeah, at that was. loss like a normal loss. No, in no way was that right. loss to Aston Villa just a normal loss. Apart from uh, apart from we losing our, on our home turf, yeah, the manager that came and did that to us was a far former manager of this football club. Like, right. why isn't this sinking in, uh, you know, to, to the Gunner fans out there? This was a former manager of the football club that we deemed not okay, not good enough to coach this football club and it right. comes down you know to the emirates and dunks on us and you see yeah you know what yeah he yeah. didn't just dunk on us just once yeah at home at right. villa park he dunked on us at home he celebrated right. on our own path yeah of stopping it's us from winning bad. it left a bitter taste in my mouth i nearly smashed my head to well, the wall because that was the job. only thing i could think about it was horrible on the it's day. Horrible. The you know, defending was shambolic. Guess what job Unai Emery's linked to now? Manchester United. Oh. Mm. So BBC Sports. Yeah. So mm. Unai Emery's now linked to the Manchester United job. Let that sink in. Mm. So, mm. And so you're talking about a tough, a very good manager with a hell of a lot of money to spend. I mean, a, a shit ton of money, Tony. Like yeah, they a, will blank spend, check. a blank they will check. spend a billion dollars. A blank check. Yeah. Home. Yeah. 
they will spend yeah. a billion dollars well, well, because that's a manager yes. they can actually trust to spend yeah, a billion hey, a billion hey. pounds. You know what I don't trust? Mm. I don't trust our board and some of the players that he had back then because a lot of the problem was was I think how you doing, Mama Flossy? And uh, I think a lot of the problem big up, was Mama Flossy. Big ups are here today also. To who's be down honest, here with us. was big his ups. to you know no offense to Emery, but really was his lack of command of the English language. He at times was extremely hard to understand. And I know that's been sort of a the backdoor rumor, right, that, that nobody wants to talk about in some cases. But that was, I think, a, a major hurdle and one of the reasons why he left. It was also, of course, the pounding we got by Chelsea and Aiden Hazard's master class. But other than those two things, Tony, he didn't really do much wrong. I thought at times, Udai Emery, the football was a little bit boring to watch. But again, are Villa that exciting to watch at times? No, but they're exciting to watch on the counterattack. And that's what he's built that team on. And so it's he knows from his experience at Sevilla, PSG, Arsenal, and whatever clubs before and in between, he knows how to play big games. He's a winner of big games. Hmm. You know, there were some games where he was the manager in that, that one season that were huge games, and we came out victorious because he knew how to operate a bombing and Lacazette and positions. It was all about positioning. All about positioning. Thomas Tuchel's a genius at it. The, you know, they, he, him, and um, sorry, I got reading the comments there for a second. Tuchel and Emery, I think to me, are sort of somewhat similar coaches. I know their styles differentiate a little bit, but the thing is, is they know how to perform in big games and they know how to set up a squad to be in, I would say, pinch point areas of the pitch. It's like we played well against Bayern Munich for what the first. 20 minutes or so, maybe some would say the first half, and then it all kind of went downhill. Um, I just I just feel that this team is, again, mentally fragile for big games. The Liverpool yeah, man, exactly, the Liverpool that's the word, really mentally bad. fragile for the very big the game. The Liverpool wasn't the Liverpool that we saw three weeks later, right? Because they were missing so many players during that match, but yeah. that's that, that game's ancient history now. So, yeah, they were missing Douglas Lewis, who, who has been a talisman for them right. this season. You know, they, they, they they it but wasn't they, there. He's he he got man of the match. Yuri Tillman's got exactly. man of the match, I believe. So I mean, it's like you and I, every knows how to play against big teams, and that's yeah. I think one of the reasons why we even were interested in him in the first place after Wenger, because we were. Wanting to beat those top four, five, six teams. I mean, that was yeah. that was our that's our goal. And of course, Emery, Emery, Mikel has done that over the five years that he's been here, especially this season. I think we, we haven't lost to any of the big six teams. So, all right, good goodness. See, there's something I want to tell you. You know, when we went out there to the eighty hat, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think I told you some other brothers were down here also. You know. And then um, I, I was I was telling these people, yeah, that hey, Arsenal not going to the eighty head and getting that three points, yeah. I consider mm. it that we've given the title away. I said it on mm. my channel. I said it here, yeah. And 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 uh, you know, people came hard at me and, and saying, oh, there's still more games. Uh, they'll still drop points. I believe that they would drop points. I believe some people would drop points. That's a given. Liverpool drop points. But how about Manchester City, who are seasoned in this? The generals in doing this. We know this, these guys can go 15 games on Ben. How many is just six games for them to, like, they would just steamroll these remaining six teams and, and, and just run right. away with that. Like United 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 will right. really come back to hurt us. And that's yeah. what is hurting us right now. We can't fall back to anything right now. Yeah. From here on, it's City Vantage. I, I I really think City have won this title. Any Arsenal fan who still harbors that, uh, 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 you know, harbors that inclination that we are going to win this title, I'm sorry, your heart is going to be broken. Yeah? Well, I, I, yeah. See, I, I've tried giving hope to lots of people on my channel about this Arsenal team. Yeah, I'm not that kind of guy that, you know, just want to talk negative about my team and bring my team down. No, I try okay. giving hope, you know, but I'm sorry, man. This team keeps failing us again and again. But you know what? Yeah, this season, this year, 
I'm not going to go down the wire and get my heart broken down to the wire. I take a stand here. No. If you're not beating Aston Villa at home, if you're not defending properly against Aston Villa at home, yeah, minutes, just minutes, not even an hour, minutes after Liverpool have dropped the ball, giving you a chance to go up the table with nobody chasing you, yeah? This was a chance for the Arsenal. We blew it. We threw it away. And and, and I, I don't think there's any coming back from this. And see, Oregon Guna, if you do know Arsenal, you would know that we always lose in clusters. I hope you understand this. Oh, we sure. always lose in clusters. Check out the other time when we went up to nearly seven games without a win or seven games with just one win. Right. We were, you see, it was a train. Yeah? It was a cluster. Yeah. I right. believe that Arsenal will go a cluster of games without winning. But I, I don't think our mentality is just there yet. I don't think this manager is... I've been saying it since the uh, Carabao Cup, since he booted right. us out of the Carabao Cup. This manager doesn't have what it takes to get us over the line. It's inexperienced. It's so stubborn. And and, and I'm sorry, man. He, he, he fluffed his lines against Aston Villa. He got bested by the better man. And and, right. and he was shown that he's inexperienced. Right. I, I'm sorry. Do you still believe in this manager? Because, and do you believe in this I, manager, man? I've been on the, I've been, I was Arteta out for the first three seasons until, of course, last season when I saw we actually all saw real progression. We saw real fight. We had real hope last season. So that put me on the fence. But the other side of the big fence is doors. that big up early doors. And, and big up Manny, big up the assemble, and big up big up Mama Flossy, big up Manny, yeah, and everyone they assembled, everyone big up to you, yeah. And so, um, so after the dropping the ball last season, it kind of put me on the fence because I was really I was Arteta out last season was spectacular, so I was kind of on the fence, and then we kept progressing more, got you know got got some great victories, and so that kind of put me well maybe back on the fence a bit, right, just to kind of see what we could do. And then after the bottle of jobs, which was last season of Aaron Ramsdale, but that you know also had to do with the inclusion of Saliba's injury and lack of form of soccer at the end. So I'm not going to blame Aaron Ramsdale, but there are specific players we can point the finger at. But again, last season, ancient history. It doesn't have anything to do with this season, um, even though some of his numbers and statistics are the same, if not better or worse. But at the end of the day, you again, hit the nail on the head. That's inexperienced. This will be, you know, again, one cup out of 17 attempts. If we don't win the Champions League, one out of 18 attempts at a yeah. trophy if we don't win the league. I mean, it just gets, the numbers are bewildering, right? All of a sudden now he's he's 17 for 18 on, on trophy attempts, right? And in the business world, you would fire a, a manager, a senior manager, with that sort of record of leading employees to great things for a long time. With and those then, kind oh, of numbers, with high. those numbers, yeah, it's, it's, it, it wouldn't make sense yeah. in the business world. And and the fact of the matter is, we know as a fan base that there's better managers out there with more of a pedigree, like Unai Emery has. Look at the trophies he's won in Sevilla. I think he won. Correct me if I'm wrong. Three years in a row, the Europa League with Sevilla. How? Like how? Like you start to like how do you do that? He obviously didn't have the players. He didn't have the money. How? It's called football knowledge, Arteta, and that's the thing. He doesn't have enough of it yet. An assistant mm -hmm. coach at Man City does not qualify you to be the top guy, the governor at fucking Arsenal. It just doesn't. Dude, let, let, this is, this is, Again, you know what? Yeah, let's job. let's actually I, go into I some specifics. Josh Crocky, he snaked his mm. way into this job. Let's go into some specifics, and you're gonna answer this. How sure. come in 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 that first goal do we have a left back? Yeah, called Zichenko, Playing, supposedly yeah. one of the most experienced yeah. players in our side. The guy who has won us, who has won trophies. Big time trophies, league titles down there in Manchester City. Yeah, comes down here. Yeah, and in this matchup against Aston Villa, yeah, he's supposed to be in the left hand side and he's at right back defending while on the left hand side, no one is there. 
no one no completely open, gaping yeah. open. Yeah. I'll make this pronouncement here, yeah. Zichenko, he has been worse, far worse yes. than Rob Holden ever was <laughs> for this football club. Just, no, 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 we, no, we, we, we just have to. We just have to get that out of the way. Let's go into more specifics. How about Kai? How about Kai Havertz? God knows that, uh, you know, I, I got it wrong about Kai Havertz at the start of the season. Uh, no, you you know, getting no, into the season, you he know, it surprised us. Season. You did not get it wrong. I, th I thought it was going to get just three goals. Let, let's be right. sincere. Okay, so three, four goals. Okay, so he tripled Best that. four goals. But he proved me wrong. He scored double double figures this season. I get yeah. that. But yeah. see, man, up to three, up to three chances to put the mm. ball into the net against Aston Villa, and right. this guy decides not to score a goal. And a that's why I don't trust this player. Apart from laying the ball over and laying it up for other attacking, uh, 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 you know, outlets, this guy is brain dead. He doesn't know what he's doing. It, right. it doesn't. It doesn't come with that complete striker package. I'm talking of dribbling. I'm talking of uh, moving, knowing how to progress and move the ball in and about the 18 year box. Vision. Vision. You know, yeah. if it's not his aerial ability, you know, it's just his layup. You know, his layup uh, tactics. Yeah, right. Right. whatever he does down there. You know, he doesn't have no speed. He doesn't have no tricks at all. No tricks in the bag. No right. dribbling skills. He's not a complete striker. And that falls back and circles back to this manager in not bringing in a world-class striker in the January transfer window. Good. Throw away Kai Havertz. He wasn't the worst on the pitch. How about Bukayo Saka? After the first 10 minutes in that game, I saw this kid clutching his hamstring, already yeah. injured in the first 10 minutes. Why will Mikel Arteta continue fielding Bukayo Saka when he is clearly injured. Good and okay. Throw that away. How about his gaff in the substitutions? Yeah? Mm. How about this? With Martin Odegaard, presumably the best kid playing down there on the day against us. Right. And this manager deems it necessary to hack off the best playing midfielder, the guy who opened up the defense of Aston Villa in the first half and right. hacks him off in the second half, and then our midfield completely capitulates, yeah? Grinded to the halt with every other player just looking like clowns out there. What are you, What is Mikel Arteta thinking? Hey, He's not thinking. Bro, this is the problem. Th this it's is why the issue. Because he wants to, he's, he's stubborn in the way he does things. He's reactive to his subs, right? He waits for the other team to make the first couple subs, and then he reacts to that. And in some ways, I guess I can kind of understand that. But it's like, you know, the title's on the line. Fuck that. Be aggressive. Make the subs. Make the changes now. If you see something, make the changes now. The thing is with Odegaard, he probably got a knock. And you know we don't know what his injury report's going to be like oh, for a month. Or, 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 or you mean, don't believe in that. You, you don't believe that, that right? Please tell me you don't believe that other guy was know. injured. No, no, I don't. Please think tell me you I don't just, believe he's injured. No, I, I don't trapped. believe it. It's lies. The manager's lying. He's not injured. Bukayo Saka is injured. Why didn't he get him out? Bukayo was out there holding his hamstring. He didn't pull him out. That's lies. It's lies. The manager's lying. This no, are lies. Okay. It's not true. Well, what I, it's what not I, true. I understand. What I saw, though, was he getting whacked in the chest and went down for about three minutes, right? So I saw him get kicked in the chest and he went down. And then he played for about 10 more minutes and he got pulled off. So I thought a couple things. I thought, okay, maybe he's, maybe he got a knock, which means, you know, a knock isn't my, like a full-on injury, right? Like the, the, the doctor team didn't come out and put him in a fucking stretcher and carry him off. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's to me is an injury. If you get a knock, you get knocked in football. You get kicked. That's the game. You get kicked in the chest. You get kicked in the back. You get kicked in the ass. The balls, the shit, the knees, the ankle, everywhere. So in the first ten minutes, when Kyle Saka gets kicked hard and a knock, it's the, the better telling him that you know what you're not going to go anywhere today, Saka. So Saka has to expect that he's going to get kicked in the first ten minutes of the game. That's that shit happens. 
Actually, Naps, look at the times where Ronaldo was absolutely annihilated in the first 15 minutes of some of the games against teams. So that happens, especially when you're a top player. Defense are going to come after you and test you in the first 10 or 15 minutes. So regardless to Odegaard, he got kicked in the chest, which I don't know how powerful that was. We, you know, It looks like he got shot by a sniper as well. So he got the kick in the chest. He comes back and plays 10 minutes, and then he gets subbed. Now, I agree with the part you're saying, once he got subbed, everything just kind of went to shit because we have then no direction, no real order, no organization and attack. The attack, they just all look at each other again. And that's what pisses me off the most. They all look at each other for someone else to take initiative to fucking do something, to take the game by the scruff of the neck, push us forward and put one in the back of the net. I, I just, you know, it's like we try to walk the ball into the net. Look at the chances that we had against Villa. They were so close to the box that, yeah, the defense was already compressed. No one is willing to take a shot. Shoot the ball inside the fucking dead. box. Jesus I know. Christ. And this is brain dead attack. And I don't. And I, I blame Saka for that. I blame the attackers, and I blame Arteta for setting them up that way. It's one thing to press, but when you get the ball, shoot it. Shoot the ball. You don't need to dink it around. We saw Saka, you know, dinking it around. And with the penalty at, um, at Bayern Munich at the end of the game last week, dink it around the keeper and put score it. I don't know what the problem is. And, you know, we, we were scoring goals like mad. And then all of a sudden we hit this wall, and it's a mental wall. But I still think it, I've said it over and over. It's the dark cloud over this club that gets over this squad, no matter who the manager is. It's happened to Wenger. Year after year after year, it, it happened to Uwe Emery, who at least got us to a European final. I'll give him that. And at the end of the day, he had us in Champions League. I think we were at third place. So, you know, Uwe Emery got backstabbed. Our tennis snakes his way into the job through through Josh Kroenke, who they're like buddies, right? So our tennis snakes his way in the job, who hasn't won shit but an FA Cup in five years, bro. It'll be five years if we don't win anything shocking, this year. Man. After spending we're, seven hundred, they're going to go with him again. They're going to go with him again, and, then, and he's going to find another midfielder for a sixty-five million dollar range. That's absolute dog shit, and he's going to buy him. And we're and, and we're going to change the complexity of the squad is going to change. We again, we go back to January. Not a, not even a, a twenty million dollar midfielder. Like, are we that close to the FFP financial laws that we can't buy a twenty to twenty five dollar midfielder? That true, is, true. Maybe somewhere in Europe that Oregon, can do a job. Oregon, this Oregon Gunner, why are I we mean, looking too far in this? Disgraceful. Why are we looking too far in this? What about the ones we have right here, right now? Fabio Vieira was on the bench. He brought that guy for about forty million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. But, and the guy couldn't even come in to play. Not good enough, bro. You left him on the bench. Mm -hmm. Then why did you spend forty million dollars on that guy? Because I think that, See, because and, and I've said this, yeah. Okay. Jorginho okay. playing 90 minutes games, yeah, back yeah, to back. Right. It's it's see, it's, it's not insane. sustainable. He's uh, not in right. his 20s. That guy's right. in his late 30s. Why why putting him in back to back games 90 minutes with no rest like that? We had Thomas Partey who was down there. Why was Thomas Partey just sitting on the bench doing I nothing? I don't believe Thomas Party is ready to play at all. He looked so, so I think I don't know if it was you or somebody else said he looked. Oh, he looked good against Luton. It's fucking Luton. It's fucking Luton. Of course he looks good. This is what I mean. We're, we can bash these teams all we want, four, five, six, nil. But when it comes to the big teams, we capitulate. And this isn't like a first new thing. This has been going on for twenty years. For the FA Cup, was it two thousand fourteen? We had to fight back whole city. We had to fight Hull, who were up 3 0. Remember that FA Cup? That was a fun one. We came out 4 3. Shout out Air Ramsey. You know, I mean, this isn't new. This club has carried a dark cloud over its head for many, 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 many years when it comes to, to, yeah. um, to competitive, hardcore games at the end of the season. We dropped it yeah. in 2015-16. Leicester City went on to win seven games in a row by one nil scores. Yeah. Look it up. The last seven games of the Leicester City season, they won the last seven games of the season, all games one nil. We couldn't score one on our patch against Villa? And we're talking about a title challenge? 
Not good enough. We have not Chelsea good enough. United not and Spurs enough. left to play. Not good enough. Chelsea United Spurs. Chelsea just put six on Everton. They're going to be up I'm for it. I'm telling you, man. I'm they telling found you, a man. formula that it, works. It's shocking. They have fast it's players that are fast. Yeah, they're not good. They're not defensive. They can barely score goals. But Cole Palmer will score against Arsenal. Let's not fucking forget that now he's now the second top, third top scorer in the league behind Washington Jeez. and Holland. I'm just it's shocked people. the way most. I'm just shocked the way most Arsenal fans have already moved on from this so quickly. So now, yeah, we can't even defend against Aston Villa, and then we will have to go to Old Trafford. Yeah, we're expected to go to the Old Trafford and go win. Yeah, in a place where even Liverpool <laughs> couldn't even go there and get a win, we have to go down to Old Trafford and get that win. Yeah, How sure are we that win. Chelsea Football Club won't come down to town and, and, and shake us off? Like, how sure are we? See, yeah, but again, that's a discussion for another day. Right. I thank God I won't be around tomorrow to witness what's going to happen to Arsenal tomorrow, but we can yeah. as well talk about it. See, yeah. Bayern Munich welcomed the Arsenal to the football club. I'll give you a background to this. Bayern Munich, yeah, lost Coleman to that precious game against Cologne. They won Cologne 2-0, uh, yeah, uh, uh, just this weekend, this past weekend. Uh, Bayer Leverkusen won the, uh, the German Bundesliga. Uh, congrats to Granit Xhaka. Yeah. He left this football club and then went on to win a title. What a player. What a player. And what a player, uh, you know, he was for them, uh, 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 you know, this season for Bayer Leverkusen I'm talking about. Yeah. But again, back to Bayern München, yeah? They're out uh, with uh, Coleman. Coleman is out. It was stretched off, so I don't think he'll be coming back. Uh, Serge yeah, Gnabry uh, has a very, very acute and chronic hamstring problem uh, that he damaged uh, at the Arsenal, the Emirates, in our last matchup against them. And then... Uh, uh, um, they have a problem with Alfonso Davis, who is also suspended for that matchup. So they have right. three, you know, three it's main players uh, that are out of that game. But in place of um, in place of Alfonso Davis, there's this guy called Guillermo. Guillermo is a very, uh, you know, uh, yeah. I think Guillermo or Guerrero, something like Guerrero, that. Guerrero, Guerrero. Yeah, Guerrero. 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 Yeah, Rafael Guerrero. Yeah, you know, he's a good player. Oh, he's called the weekend also uh no said he wouldn't be down there but again thomas muller with all his experience can come straight into that team and yeah. guess what thomas muller actually scored in the game against cologne so they're ready for the arsenal bayern yeah. munich versus arsenal take it away oregon Gunner. What, what do you think i've said ever since the draw came out that we lose the away leg hmm. That's just, uh, you're talking 75, 80,000 Bayern Munich fans. You're talking now an extremely fragile arsenal mentally. Gabriel wasn't the Gabriel he was two months ago. Saliba wasn't what he was since maybe November, right? It's going to be a field day for them. I don't, I'm not saying they're going to put eight on us or anything. Um, but if we keep the same man, that's a, that's a possibility. Five is uh, a possibility, but I, I'll keep my mouth shut until you finish. Possibly, yeah, yeah. I think eight's a stretch, I think five's probably a stretch too. But, but right, you're they're missing top players, but that doesn't seem that doesn't slow down the system, right? Just because Aston Villa, was, Aston Villa was missing Douglas Luiz, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they bring Yori Killamans and he gets man of the match and he almost scores, right? So, the thing is, is that that we're going to drop this one because I don't think that we're all of a sudden going to find this miraculous form and this mentality that's going to dig us out from the hole that we dug ourselves Sunday. The black cloud remains, you know, mm. and then DJ Crane asked the question, you know, has our chat changed the culture in some ways, but not, not when it comes to high pressure, you know, one-off games that we have to win. I mean, we can cruise through the shit teams and mid table teams, you know, like, like a shit through a goose. But the thing is, is that when it comes to real teams that have football heritage, we struggle. We struggle. And the Bayern Munich thing, Harry Kane, deadly, you know, somewhat. And that's what I mean. Gabriel Saliba are going to have to have another top game to keep him in check. 
They're going to have to keep Leroy Sané in check. He's not injured. Oh, oh that's another one. Goretzka's a midfielder that's very good, getting on the pitch very strong, just pushed us off the ball last time. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so shocked about Goretzka. About he had a good game of, on the Emirates. Yeah, yeah, he's a top world-class midfielder for Germany. And he's huge. He's a big, big guy, you know. He's yeah. muscular and strong. And he can control right. the midfield just as easily as somebody, you know, someone like a Yaya Torre or a Douglas Louise or – you know, Rod, Rodri, he's very much the rodri esque but he's probably not yeah. as good. But, um, no, we're going to have to, again, take a look at the lineup. I don't want to see, you know, now with well, the, the midfield, I guess I want to go with the normal back four, but I want to see Tommy Asu on the left back, of course. I don't want Zinchenko even, like, near the bus. I don't want to see him even. Yeah. I want to see him just standing on the street corner with the street sign, with the with the <laughs> Jiren Timber was seen in training today. So, Jiren Timber was seen in training today, training intensely for this game. He's not ready, bro. Will you he throw? Be, will you be, throw? Be, will you throw Timber into that frying pan no. at, at Bayern? No, God, no, hmm. no. That's not how you manage, bro. I would have thrown Timber, maybe, maybe, for Zinchenko against Villa. If Arteta picks this poor kid in his first game back against one of the, now the biggest game of the season, Sunday was, now the biggest game of the season, you know, and throw Timber on there. I mean, I know he's been training. I'm sure his leg is okay. I, I you know, I I know he knows how to play football, Tony. But, is yeah. I mean, if you're Arteta, do you put him in the firing line like this? I don't Tom know, Tom but he was seen in training today, training yeah. intensely. Well, good. So it's well, very likely be, that he might be so, there. No, I know Tommy Asu, Sarsky and Hutch, and Ben White, right? But the midfield is the tough part for me. And even the attacking three, to be honest, Tony, because uh, Jorginho, I don't know. Maybe we bring Thomas Party in, put Rice on the left. And if Odegaard is okay and just had a little knock and he's healed from whatever, you know, whatever went down yeah. Sunday, well, he's got to start. Um, Does Martinelli start this game for you? Because when Martinelli came in, you know, I, I don't know. He, I think player. he came in for Trossard, but right. Trossard too was so underwhelming in that game against well, Aston scored. Villa. And, and I've been scored. one of those who have been trying to advocate for him coming up in the first half because right. since he gives us something much in the second half i was like hey why don't we give this guy a chance in the first half and see what you know what never to the table. and then they brought him up in that first half against aston villa and then he stank out the old place after i, I completely he completely just stank out the place and, yeah. and right now I'm, I'm 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 trying to make that decision between seeing him come in in that second half or if we should just risk it in the first half and again, risk it having him just playing nonsense in the first half. Well, I, I think you, well, now that's when Arteta has to get creative. It's like, okay, so you keep Trossard on for 75 minutes, you bring on Martinelli. In other games, you put Martinelli, you, know, you start Martinelli for 70 minutes, and you bring on Trossard, right? Well, I have to split the fucking difference. But, but for me, yes, I would start Martinelli first just to get that, that, that I guess that pace and that burst of speed that he brings. If he gets the mm. ball, a lot of the times they were going to the right side on Saka, right? Remember how they were going to the right side? He fouled yeah. Alfonso Davis, and all of a sudden we stopped going to the right side. So whatever the hell that was, that's another mistake that we made against Bayern Munich. That was Arteta's fault for not, you know, real realizing there's a problem and fixing it. Um, yeah. But coming up, yeah, I think Martinelli. But if it doesn't work out for Martinelli in the first half. <clears throat> like if yeah. he's really getting, if it's just not, if he's not producing anything, halftime, then bring in Trissard. Don't wait till the 70th minute. Don't wait so long. If it's not half for Martinelli, by halftime, yank him. Yank him. Mm. And, then, yeah. and then go to halftime, yank Martinelli, put Trissard in there. If it's nil nil, Martinelli's not producing anything, you know, and then. And yeah, hack him off. Was, about you know, yeah, yeah. Say okay, we realize it didn't work with Gabs. We're throwing in Trissard, and you have to reorganize, remix what you what you're trying to do. Hmm. Yeah, trying to be creative. Yeah, exactly. Assembled, and so hmm. you know, 
And so I was still, so I guess my, my front three would be Martinelli, and I'm going to go with Jesus on this one because I liked what he wait, did in the wait, first Wait, Jesus? Because, well, let me listen. Didn't me you see you what I, Jesus I, did? did you, didn't you see what he did well, against Aston Villa? But, but, but what he did against Bayern Munich, though, was was very nice when he when he juked two defenders and dished it off to Sard for the second goal. I think Jesus against Eric Dyer, I take that all day. I take that mm. all day. I know Jesus isn't the Jesus we want, but he causes a problem for Eric Dyer. He causes a problem for their center backs. And I just want energy. What I want to see, Tony, is fight and energy. And Havertz just doesn't bring that energy. He, you know, I, obviously we want Does to Havertz pop. starts for you? Tomorrow? No. 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 Then who comes in in place of him, then? Where do you want Havertz? I don't... Mm-hmm. No, no, no. I'm saying Rice, Party, Odegaard in the midfield. I'm saying Martinelli, Jesus, and Saka. No fucking Havertz for me, bro. He no can Havertz, come up in yeah. the second half. He can come up for Jesus in the second he half. He can come in in the second half. I yeah. don't want to be near the midfield. Big up Anthony Herbert. No, Big up Anthony to... Herbert, our brother. How are you doing, Anthony, man? Nice to see you yeah. down here. Yeah, no, I am I am benching Havertz, and my midfield is Rice on the left, Party in the back. And Odegaard on the right with Martinelli on the left, uh, Jesus up front, and Saka on the right. If they're all injury free and ready to play, I think that will give them the most problems because that speed and pace in that side. Havertz slows the shit yeah. down. Even though we've seen him do some, like you said, he's in double figures in the striker role. Bring him on in yeah. the 65th minute for Jesus, right? Yeah. Go with speed at first, and in the end, put Havertz on there to muscle him off. You know, I mean, I, Jesus against Eric Dyer, I take that I take that one-on-one all day long. Eric Dyer then cannot ha, handle Jesus. Then how about Jorginho? How about Jorginho? Jorginho well, Parte? Then, then, then what happens? Comes in for, the, uh, I don't know, for up 1-0, pray to the football gods, bring Jorginho on for party in the 80th minute. The party, <laughs> you know, I'm, tor- I'm torn between party and Jorginho, but I'm very much on the side of the argument that you can't play Jorginho in intense games back to back, yeah. back to back, back, back to back. To back. His yeah. legs won't yeah. take it. If Thomas Party's ready, he needs to be in the side. If he's if he has to be like ready though, and I don't think he's that no. ready, but I know he's been training. But since again, the, but again, but Come again on. now because Thomas Partey hasn't played yet. Yeah? He hasn't played a number of games. And again, he came in in that Luton game. And after that one, you know, he has just been shelved on the bench. I, I doubt if he has much fitness to come in to a yeah. game of this I'm level and of this you. caliber. But that's my starting 11. And it's, it, does, it does not have Havertz in there. It doesn't have, Havertz is on the bench. Because I, okay. I, I know what Arteta wants to do. He wants to fucking play him at left mid. That's where he wants to play him. He wants Jesus and Enkedia up front, but they're not successful up front. So he had to make a change and put Havertz up there, and he sees a 10-goal return, and he puts him back at left mid. This is where we all get the up with Arteta. You're breaking something that wasn't broken. Havertz up front was fine, but I don't, I'm don't. i not going to start him now. Jesus destroyed them when the few minutes he was on with that hmm. beautiful run in the box. Great layoff. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. That, that, That's a big shout. Because he's that kind of player that can move the ball around. Mm. Exactly. And that's what we'll need to be doing. We play slow. We play into their hands. We played slow against Billy. We played right into their hands in the second half. And again, See, yeah, and again, yeah, this Bayern Munich team, yeah, even it's the usual stuff that usually gets them, yeah, that, that, that caught up with them at the Emirates. And Arsenal is failing to capital, you know, to capitalize on that. Bayern Munich as a team this season, yeah, they don't like teams pressing up on them. They don't like no. teams not giving them space to pass the ball and move the ball around and stuff like that. If you want to get Bayern Munich, you have to stifle every bit of air. Every bit of air. You have to press them hard. Yeah. And make sure you attack them like dogs in a way that, you know, would just stifle the way they pass the ball around. And, uh, you know, if God helps you, they get the ball to Sané, uh, you know, 
mm-hmm. that break is coming because at every instant when at the Emirates, when they passed the ball down to uh, 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 Leroy Sané, it was a one-way street. The way this guy just kept on, you know, running circles around our players here, yeah, it was a swift entry. And see, it's so easy to cut into that Arsenal midfield right. and defence because he had yeah. a free run. Him and Serge Gnabry had a free run. So it's very, very, you know, it's very, very important that we shore up that midfield, make it a little bit more thicker, make it a little bit more steely, you know, and, and make sure that, you know, it's airtight and make sure we stifle right. whatever. Uh, a Bayern has in that middle of the pitch, uh, just to just to stifle their runs uh, and their incisive runs into that uh, midfield. Because the last time uh, you know we faced them at the Emirates, they caught us so easily that it was so so easy, uh, right. you know, to do that. But again, w- will you bring back um, Kivior into the fray? Mind you, uh, you did not play in the last game, so I, I probably maybe Mikel Arteta was kind of like you know uh, uh, resting him for this matchup. Will you bring him in for this one? I put him on the bench. Tommy Asu, I think I'd start left back. But I, I mean, Kivio would need to be on the bench. I mean, maybe sub him off for Tommy Asu oh, on the 85th minute or something. But Tommy Asu needs to start. I think you know, as much as I don't rate him, I still he's still on my list of clear out players. Um, I just I think he brings a little more than Kiwi or I think he's a little more um he's a little more agile with the ball, a little more calmer on the ball. I think just a little more calmer overall uh, defensively. Um I think Kiwi has a tendency to get, you know, make mistakes and get anxious, get confused. He's just not a fully he's just not fully a prem player yet, if he ever will be or not, that's to be decided. But um Kiwi's had some good t- displays, I'll give him that. But Tommy Asu's gotta be the guy. Just he's just more athletic. Bring, Tommy Asu, right? Bring more to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just think, and I, it's very it's very difficult for people to beat him on whatever flank he is. And uh, you know, you could go to It'll the right, tough. you could go to the left, everywhere. It's difficult before you can get past him. Right. Look at this comment from the assembled. I think it's a very important comment because. You know, Bukayo Saka of late, his form has been dreadful, man. Even if, he, you know, he has gotten us over the line in some games, yeah. But, oh, my days. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, he's been playing poorly, man. I don't recognize this kid when he's playing again. So, look at this comment. It says, Havertz is clear enough to occupy Dyer. Saka is the weak link. Is Saka the weak link or a gungune? Talk to us oh. honestly and humbly. Yes. <laughs> assembled comes out with a good point. Uh, yeah, Havertz can definitely occupy Dyer. I think, you know, my dead nan at times could occupy Dyer. But, yeah, Saka, um, no, that's a good question. But I'm going to say no. I'm going to say this season, I think Martinelli has been worse, to be honest. Saka's got twice as many goals as Martinelli, uh, but he's also playing a lot more. Um he scored some Saka scored some important goals for us this season. Um obviously the one at Bayern Munich, <laughs> you know, was pretty damn important. So I think Saka's just been really hit or miss this season, but I think Martinelli overall has really let let us down after last season. I think he scored 15, 16 goals last season. This season he's got six. So I mean we're talking a 10 goal reduction. That's massive. That's really, really, really massive. Yeah. Uh and Odegaard isn't scoring goals like he was. Uh, but no, I would have to disagree a bit. Assemble, I would have to say Martinelli really kind of carries that torch for me. But but Saka is probably not close behind him. Um, but I still think that Saka has more of the opportunity to surprise us and can surprise us more than Martinelli can right now. Okay. Um, see, in, in see, what will be the key battle in this matchup here? And again, what formation? And um, what tactics do you think will be um, could, can be employed or could be employed? You know, to to help us out in 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 Arians Ariana. Um, do you, what do I want, or what do I think Arteta is going to do? <sighs> but bro, at this point, I don't know, man. <laughs> what you think <laughs> Arteta will do? Arteta, I'm going right? to go with what I think <laughs> Arteta is going to do, and I talk. It's the, it's the back four with Tommy Asu there. Um, you know, there's. 
I've heard rumblings of a shout for Ramsdale back in goal. Yeah, but, Maybe but again, even you, you, you've not been sold on this David Raya project, right? Not, yeah, no, because, no, yeah, yeah, you've not been sold on it. Yeah, you've been you've been you've been clear about that. Well, it's the first thing I said I wanted to do. Hire a contractor to build a wall between David Raya's legs at the end of the Bayern Munich. Because to be honest, it's three two and they win with things like COVID. It doesn't hit oh the post. God. It goes behind his, his legs. Are like too leaky. And I can't remember too many, leaky. many, many goals that Air Ramsdale let between his legs. You know, yeah, he missed oh, some okay. reachers. All oh, goalies missed some goals, but I, I seriously don't remember two goals in one game where we could have been. Well, one was a goal we could have been scored on that went between the keeper's legs. I don't think oh, that ever happened with Air Ramsdale. And in his no, near post right again. In his yeah. near yeah. post. In his exactly. near post. Like, what, oh my cool, days! Like, what, 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 your, your knee has to get down. He lacks ground. positional I, awareness. You know, I'm not. David Raya lacks positional awareness. I'm, the only thing that rates him. him higher, the only thing that rates David Raya higher than Ramsdale to me, is his distribution. Apart from his distribution, yeah, head to head with Ramsdale. Ramsdale would, you know, can go head to head with him by his distribution. I'm sorry, man. He's equally as poor. He's shown it. It's evident. It's clear. But, yeah. you know... I don't, man, I don't, I, man, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's so, shocking. So, so with lineups, I think he's good. As, as much as I think Ramsdale would be a shock inclusion, and as much as I think Ramsdale would actually be a, a, probably not that bad of a selection right now, He's still going to go with David Raya. So with that being said, David Raya, Tommy Asu, Starsky and Hutch, Ben White, um, and for what I think he's going to do in the midfield, for what I want in the midfield, if he plays 4-3-3, is again Rice, Party, Odegaard, and just go with Martinelli, Jesus, and Saka because there's speed and pace in that, and that's what we have to hit him with. I mean, we've talked about Goretzka being a deep mid, great midfielder, Positionally, yeah. passing, physically, he's not fast. None of their real players are fast, but they're wingers. I mean, Harry Kane okay. can jog a bit, right? But that's something to look at too. Their central midfielders are not fast. They're not speedy on the ball. Should we be going to the Allianz Arena and keep a compact defense and hope we can get to penalties, or would do we go head on with them and try to attack these people? Head on and attack. At All Munich. Attack. Yeah. Do All out attack. Work. All out attack. Out attack. Well, at attack, Allianz Arena. Some restraint in defense. Like, like Gabriel at times was pushed up all the way past the halfway line. No, 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 no. Have some fucking sense of what's going on around you. Have a radar of that. Oh, if I'm up here, maybe my attacker's behind Big me. Big up Yeti. He yeah. is. I need to run back now. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is attack is, is keep the defensive compressed, but play your position. Play your position, you know. But uh, yes, we have to hit him on the blitz again because we know that works. We've seen it before. The issue is when it doesn't work, we end up like we did against Aston Villa or even yeah. like we did against Bayern Munich. Those two games were very, very similar. Mm. You know, mm. Una Emery has taken a page out of a Tuchel and Tuchel's taken a page off of Una Emery how to it's, it's, it's beat, beat Arsenal. How to beat Arsenal. Yeah, exactly. They and they'll do the same again. They would have beat us 3 2. Did you say again? Goal doesn't hit the post. They would have beat exactly. us 3 2. So, I mean, bro, which one is I 3 2? They should have beaten us like, well. see, Aston Villa should have beaten us like 4 0. You remember no, that, there were, two, that, that right. there were two goals they that they been. should have scored. Right, right. The two goals. They but we're talking about Bayern now. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, the Bayern goal at the end with Coleman hit it. They're like, so, yeah. I mean, again, I'm not, I, I think we've just got to go with the natural lineup that we know. And that's the midfield of Rice, Party, and Odegaard with Martinelli on the left, Jesus, and Saka. Because I really think that the speed of that can get to Bayern Munich. I know they'll be, you know, able to absorb it because they're experienced. But I just think there's something in the speed of that. And I just want to – I'd rather see Havertz off the bench and go up front and mm -hmm. replace Jesus in the 65th minute or 70th minute to do something, which I don't want to see, is Havertz put in the 80th minute. 
the 85th exactly. Right, do you want to see Emmy, do you want to see Emmy Smith Rowe in this matchup here? Now remember, Emmy Smith Rowe was the last defender in that Ole Watkins final goal at Aston Villa. Surprisingly, he was. he was the only defender who <laughs> I'll call him a defender right now, yeah. <laughs> who actually thought and remembered that we actually had to do some defending, yeah, right. back in our post. So he was the only defender down there. Yeah, because uh, 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 Magalish uh, and Rose Royce were already packed up uh, somewhere that I don't know where they were, and they totally forgot how to defend. Totally forgot that their main job is to defend this football club, but they didn't. And Emmy Smith Rowe was the last person at the back. Do you want to see that player come in and play against Bayern Munich to exploit those pocket spaces in any way? Do you want to see his contributions? Do you think oh. Mikel Arteta should put more faith right now in oh. Rhys Nelson because of maybe an injury to Bukhara Saka? He's not playing in it, you know, at its optimum best. Should we replace him after a certain amount of time? Because if we go bust on this one, yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's final. No other chance right. of winning a trophy. Shout out to Longhead Yeti, of course, our big Shout brother. You. Of course, he's yeah, down here to laugh at us and and you know mock us, uh, you know down here. And and, and you know we'll, we'll take it. it. We'll take it. Yeah. I'm not ego. No, um, I think that he's. <laughs> no, I think that the strategy. That's the thing. You now you put now you put down in my head. Like, is it wise to start someone like Reese Nelson and just? Let him just go, just go, just go, just play, just run, work hard, and then hit him with Sokka in the 65th minute or something, right? And this is, you know, we know that's not going to happen, right? Arteta is set in his ways with his starting 11. He doesn't rate ESR. He doesn't rate Fabio Vieira. He doesn't really rate, you know, El Nenny, obviously. And I'm starting to think he kind of doesn't even rate Thomas Party in some ways, too. I just think Jorginho's legs are done. So uh, there's no other options, I think, right now, but to go out and try and blitz them. If we go Good. up two or three in the first half, if, then maybe there's a shout for Emerald Smith Rowe, but there's not a shout really for Reese Nelson. There's not really, you know, Fabio Vieira. And then he got the bench is so bad. <laughs> it, it, it's so bad. bad. It's, it's so bad. poor. It's so poor. It, it, see, uh, there's no injuries, but it looks like bare bones. Even if there's right. no injury, it looks like right. bare bones because you know that those players are entrusted by this manager in the first place and he spent mm. money buying these players, putting them on the bench. Vieira for $40 million. And, and, and the kid is down there wasting yeah. away, doing nothing. Hasn't even improved in this football club. See, Longhead Yeti is down here throwing bombs down here, and he yeah. says you will get slapped on the counter. D do you think so? Uh, because this is a legitimate, a legitimate truth. Yeah. Right. This right. is truth. Some of the names you facts. Mentioned, though, we can be torn up works. in the counter attack. What do you think? Yeah, for sure. But that's kind of the risk you got to take, right? I mean, th but the thing is, is that we know that we can press, but defensively. You know, I don't think Gabriel and Saliba are 100% right now. I don't mean that, like, you know, injury-wise. I just think mentally they're just not at it right now. And that's why you just have to be stable in your attack. Have, you know, limited numbers in attack. Maybe Rice isn't the, you know, maybe Rice isn't the fourth or fifth attacker. You know, maybe Rice holds back a bit and Odegaard plays more of an active role, more vertically up and down the pitch than horizontally as well. How do we I hold off Kane? How do we hold off Kane? Um, How do we hold off hold, Kane? Push him around. It costs, but he was his passing was sublime though in the first game with his back to goal. You know, it's, it's going to be tough, Tony. I don't know. You know, I mean, I just I don't really. You know, both teams are fragile right now, Byron. But this is all Byron Munich have to play for. This is all we have to play for. So it's really, it's kind of really a heads up. I mean, it was two two. Who thought we'd even really be drawing Bayern Munich and going to this stage anyway? And I don't want to get into all the coulda, shoulda, wouldas, but I mean, I at the end of the day, if we lose two one, but we go out with a fight and we have some shots on target and we have let's say fifty one to forty nine percent possession, and we lose two one, it's I'm not going to be happy. It's still not going to be good enough. But at least I can say, hey, that we gave it a go. I'm not, I'm not going to say we gave it a go. Arteta in, 
I would say we gave it a go. We need to fix what's wrong so next season we can go again. Um, Dow, you know, but I'm Dow. not going to be on like, Ted and I'm saying, uh, Dow, no do, you understand, Dow, do, you understand, do you understand that this is the only chance we have to get a trophy this season? We just right. bought with the premiership. This is the only chance we have to get a trophy. Losing at Allianz Arena isn't supposed to be on the agenda at all. We should be thinking of going there and having a win. We should. Yeah, because yeah. that's the last piece of silverware we can even we dream of. That, we've, bought, we've bottled the league as it is. We've bottled the league. We can't win that league title. It, we've bottled it. City's going to win the remaining six games. And I'm saying this due to the experience I've had. These guys have thrown lots of nightmares, you know, to, to many right. many fan base, you know, to many uh, people who have been watching the Premiership for the past seasons. We know that City, uh, you know, can get over the line when it's just six games. We've seen them do 15. We've seen them do 10. They yeah, can't oh, do yeah. this. It's just I six games. So, so they've won this. They they've they've won this premiership. It's a whole, we have a, if they draw one game, Champions League, we don't have to get out at Allianz Arena <laughs> because it's the only visible cup we can think of right now right. than the premiership. That's true. That's true. That's true. But I think you know we got to be weary in the back and go get them an attack. I just there's no other way to explain it. But I don't think Good. we sit back. I don't think we sit back and just let them control the game and, you know, let them do what they want to do and we just absorb everything. That's just not going to work. That's not how we're set up. Nah, long get, long get Yeti. No, come on, man. Palmer over Saka. Come on. No, man. No, no, no. No, let's don't, let's don't, let's don't take the abuse. <laughs> let's don't take the abuse too, too seriously. <laughs> um, uh, what, what do you say, Oregon Gooden? Palmer, uh, no, over no, Palmer. Nah, he's having nah. a purple patch. <laughs> nah, I don't, nah, I don't know. Nah. Neither one of them really great for me. I would rather <laughs> exactly. I don't know. I'd rather have Mbappe than either one of them. <laughs> bring it, Mbappe. Um, for a good, good, for a good. Bring it, Mbappe. He go at the techie. I don't care who the hell we bring in. Shoot, bring it, Jonathan, David. Um, Torres from fucking, I don't know, Feyenoord, the guy from Feyenoord. Yeah. Would you play Trissard up front? <clears throat> yes, Anthony asked that question. Yeah, definitely. I would sub him in, though, for Martinelli because I don't think Trissard has done much as a starter. He's an impact player. It's been proven over and over. I would still start Martinelli this game just to hopefully that he's on it and just you know press them as much as he can and run, yeah. run, yeah. run, lift his head up, pick out a pass. Um, but I don't like to start starting. It just, it just, it hasn't worked out this season. There's yeah. a couple of games I know he scored. I, I believe when he started, but um, we 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 ran that Anthony. We tried that Sunday, right? The hope that we could bag a couple goals with him up front and then bring Martinelli on, who we know is not in form, to you know just kind of keep the pace going. Um, and that failed miserably because if Frasar doesn't score and he's out there, what's he good for? Mm, a little bit of trickery yeah. to pick a pass, but he didn't even really do that. You know, he was mainly focused <sighs> on scoring. So, um, yeah. yeah, and that's yeah. the thing with the, the plan. So I, I do think, but but I do want to say this though that we do at times I've noticed more of a plan B. And you said earlier that once you thought that we drew a city that it was pretty much over. And I, I thought it was still, pre I still think it was back then that it was still pretty early saying, saying that though city was the only game out of this run that we could draw. Right. The draw against city, yeah. I didn't think was a world ender, but the loss to Villa looks really, really, really bad. Um, but there's still, I, there's 18 points to play for. If City draws oh, one game, if City draws Tony, and win all game, Tony, they could draw right. a game. They still got Tottenham. They, they've Are look it, at what Crystal Are Palace did against Liverpool. Or, or again, you know, we've been, see, see, again, again. I know, we've been I, through this before. We've been through right. this before. We have, and I'm not saying they're gonna, but what, there's some. Why, why should we willingly decide to trust ourselves into this pain? 
again. Many oh. have said that this is not the Man City for last season. That's true. Holland scored 50 goals last season or whatever the fuck the number is. Okay. Right? No if problem. they draw one game, Tony, and of course, if we're going to lose or draw, I mean, it goes out the window. But the theory is, the theory that's been going around this season is that City Oregon, aren't the Oregon, 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 goodness. You're talking about Man City dropping points. That's not even where the that's not even where the problem is. Where the problem is with Arsenal right now. Do you think when Wolves do you think when we go to go to Wolves, do you think we're gonna get three points down there? Do you think when Chelsea comes and inform Chelsea who's Palmer who's scoring goals for fun right now? Do you think we're gonna keep them quiet at home? We drew to them at Stanford Bridge. See, yeah, we go to Old Trafford. Yeah, even even Liverpool couldn't do it. Yeah, so do we go to Old Trafford and win? This is what I'm talking about. We're even focusing oh, on the God. city rather than even focusing on what our team is even going to do. No, no, we I'm couldn't defend for our lives play. against We've Aston got, Villa. But what gives I'll us the hope? United, we'll go to I Old Trafford and, and, and keep the clean sheet. But that doesn't keep that doesn't keep them from like possibly dropping points. I'm not saying they're going to lose, but just like we weren't suspecting Crystal Palace were going to just be. I mean. Liverpool dropped three points. It's not like they got a drop. Miracles happen, but it's doubtful, of course. But the right, but you look at the runners, they have by far the easier <laughs> schedule. Hey, you were hoping the stars aligned. The stars were aligning at one point. You know, but the yeah, thing man. is, is that, but this, but there's still see. eighteen points to play for, and, I, and to me, that's a lot. But I know from obviously being an Arsenal fan that that city will look at that and say, "We that's eighteen points in the bag." Like we're that six games we're going to win. Well, Arsenal look at it as, eh, <laughs> yeah, there might be a win in there, maybe a draw, you know, something like mm. that. And yes, Yeti, we're still going to beat Madrid. Hold that. And See, um, man. So I, just, I don't think any goddamn stars I, are getting aligned again. I, don't think I, so I think either. That, dream, what I saw Sunday. that dream has been broken. We're now right. leaving in a boulevard of broken dreams instead of. Uh, you know, myself. instead of stars aligning, you know, uh, uh, bro, man, this team has, as uh, you know, they've they've disgraced us. Uh, uh, go to every, go to every, every YouTube channel. They're just laughing at Arsenal, <laughs> mocking us, making yeah. a public show of us, uh, like uh, you know, and uh, yeah, you know, oh my God, man, you know, and and even. Even other Arsenal YouTubers that were, you know, that tried to even give the team a little bit of a push, they're all getting stick everywhere, you know. So, you know, that's the price we have to pay. I've done well, nearly up to 200 streams since the start of, of, of the season. All for nothing. All for nothing. I'll say that. Yeah, because I don't, count, I, don't, I don't count money for anything. What, I, what, I'm, what I'm looking at is is my football club the one that really drove me to do this are they really progressing no they're not we're, we're not progressing i'm sorry yeah you could say we're challenging for honors but man i want to win the big one man and, right. and we've I, not done that oregon gonna right right i agree with yeah. that a lot progressing to me would be still winning a carabao cup or winning an fa cup or at least going to the finals of those you know what I mean? If we made it to the finals of those and let's say lost the league by two points and got knocked out by Bayern Munich in the Champions League, but we had already won a, a big cup, I would be somewhat satisfied with that, I guess, but not overly happy. But I'd be like, okay, you won a trophy. That's that's fantastic. That's more than Tottenham. So I'm happy in that aspect. But it's just like, it's yeah. just every time the big the big events come knocking on our door, we fail. We just capitulate. Which is yeah, and I don't know. I don't. It's and again, it's not. This isn't new with Arteta. This isn't a new thing, right? This has been the history of the Arsenal for yeah. several, several, yeah. several years now. It's horrible, man. Hey, what's your prediction before we go, man? Uh, you know, a nice show, down, uh, man. Nice show. Uh, what's the, I, mean, I think we get. I think we get what's done. What's the prediction for the matchup before we go? I think we get done three-one at the Allianz. <laughs> no, but I think we no chest. 
No, <laughs> no, 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 wait. <laughs> no chest. <laughs> No, no chest. I think I saw some no, game over your There has to be some chest there, right? I, I think I, uh, I there think have I'll to be some chest. Will be on, will, the chest will be we'll go up one nil and lose three one. That'll be my chest. <laughs> that we will press, we'll go up one nil maybe in the twelfth minute, and then it'll all fall apart. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't think we beat them there. And I, one, I know it's the stretch, but so no, so no, no permanent <laughs> chest, just temporary no. chest. <laughs> Yeah, temporary oh chest. Temporary chest. The chest is fried eggs now. Yeah, I'm melting. Um, I just, I don't see it, bro. He said it's melting. It's about melting. We got the dad bun. Oh my my God. chest is about fried eggs. Um, yeah. I don't know what to say oh, with that save us, man. Save us, but, man. Yeah, no, I just, nah, 3 1, man. We get fucking, <laughs> we get torn apart. I think we go up, I think we go up 1 0, we lose 3 1. I, yeah, I just see yeah. it all over. Yeti, Yeti says the chest is fried eggs. <laughs> just, Yeti needs another beer. Yeti, Yeti is wicked, man. That guy has a wicked soul. <laughs> He's a great guy, anyway. <laughs> you are all I'm getting hungry now. Look, I see him rolling us, Arsenal fans. Yeah, that's that's what we get. That's what oh, we get. No, nope, I think we get done, bro. We got Barcelona. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, if we got to face Barcelona or something, no, 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 no. no. Yeah. See, yeah, no, no. um, Oregon Gunner, I, I think yes, we're sir. gonna be beaten by five goals to two. Oof. The morning, five yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The morning is gonna be bad. See, yeah. <laughs> Thank God I won't be watching that game because why not? It, 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 uh, uh, no, no, no. I have a uh, well, I have an evening game to rest. Oh you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Because you know I, I started working uh, with the with the Finnish uh, with the Finnish um, FA. So you know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a referee and observer for for them. So you know, but tomorrow's shift is. Um, it's for a game uh, uh, tomorrow, so I'm officiating that game. And yeah. you know, as they gave me the shift, I just say, "Hey, thank God, I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm not gonna see Arsenal get battered right, and get right. disgraced." Oh, that, 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 that's, bro, bro, too, uh, that's what's gonna happen. So I'm not gonna see that. So you know, are I'm you saying that's that. a Harry Kane hat trick? Are you saying there's a Harry Kane hat trick in those five goals? Bro, I see them scoring for fun. And I see the Arsenal defenders. I, I saw it in a dream. I saw the Arsenal defenders just bending down and burying yeah, their yeah. heads in shame. So, you know, I just have this feeling. And that's a horrible, horrible stadium to go to in such a right. way. I think we'll be hurt again and we'll be hurt brutally. It's going to be brutal tomorrow. Three not brutal enough. We're going to hurt badly tomorrow. It's going to be bad. And, you know, I pray. I pray we... Uh, see, man, I pray we escape lightly, but I don't yeah. see any way. Yeah. Uh, bro, look at Aston Villa. If Aston Villa can do that to us, uh, bro, we're getting steam road. Well, hopefully Zinchenko won't be at right back, so. <laughs> this manager might just go put him there. You know he's a stubborn guy. You know, Zinchenko you know, is striker. He's a stubborn guy. You know, he, he, he's a stubborn guy. He, he might put in Zinchenko. You know, he might yeah. decide oh, to actually choke the midfield. He might decide to yeah. choke the midfield and inverting Zachenko and making that midfield, uh, 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 you know, that midfield three or midfield uh, uh, four, just to choke the midfield to kind of like cutting, uh, 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 you know, silky and fast players like Sane cutting through that midfield and making those deep dashing runs facing our defense. It's so possible when that. you have a player. Exactly. It's it's very <laughs> possible when you have a player like Leroy Sane. He can do those things. Do you think what I saw, Leroy Sane? Are you, are you telling me no I'm, no, no, I'm saying Mikel Arteta might put him there, not what I want. Uh, I'm saying he might put him there. So, of course, we just make our own, you know, yeah, yeah. Thought and and, right. and opine that this is what's going to happen. But Mikel Arteta is a stubborn yeah. manager. Don't forget about that part. He Very stubborn he, manager. 
Yeah, he would want to prove people wrong and go and put the Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's the kind of dickhead he is. That's true. Exactly, man. He wants to prove us wrong, the fans wrong. And, and you know, we are not the ones that he should be picking the fight with. We are on the same team. You know, but, right. you know, he doesn't see in that way. You know, he, he rather puts in uh, uh, Zichenko, you know, to prove Arsenal fans wrong. And, and that would be his undoing. Because if he puts him there, oh, my days, they're going to steamroll him. They're going to yeah, steamroll him. I know. That's the, he can't be in the line. I, I swear. If Arteta has any brain sense, any sense at all, any brains at all, he would have looked at the Villa game and realized that Zichenko is best <laughs> not. Arsenal quality. He's not Premier League quality, you know. So why would you play him? And that's where I think I, he's got to make the switch to Tommy Asu after what he saw against Villa. He has to make that switch. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of over the, over it to be honest. I'm, re- I'm just, fin- to be honest, ready for the season to be over. Because it's I'm ready for such, the season to go. Yeah, I'm ready I'm for the season to be over. Like let it be, let it be gone. I just yeah, want it to be gone, be and then I take a holiday, recalibrate, and just relax right. and 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 try to they make need... sense of everything. Like you know, Ooh, it's... they need a trip to Dubai right now. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, do something. Yeah, but what we what, but to, like overall, I know we, I know you want to get going, Tony. Was uh, yeah, Sunday was a sad, sad showing for a game. I got up, you know, eight o'clock in the morning for, which isn't oh, too bad, man, man. you know. But um, on a Sunday, eight in the morning to watch that. I mean, I really thought oh. the first half played pretty well. How did you go back to sleep? <laughs> I didn't. Morning. I didn't do a stupid match reaction with TJ <laughs> afterwards for an hour and a half, and then I had to watch highlights of other games. Yeah, that was like three o'clock. Oh, I got like a twenty-minute nap, but. Yeah, I just um, flawless yeah, wanted me to come to the show today, and uh, you know, after the yeah, Champions League match, up, I said, I said, man, I said, man, no, 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 no. Actually, I have an early wake yeah. tomorrow for work. But yeah. even if I didn't have, I'm not going there because see, yeah, they would have chewed me alive down yeah, there. Like, TJ the hard. dog is yeah. waiting to you know just <laughs> keep me alive and you know yeah. tear my yeah. coat. Uh, Flawless, the lion is ready to just you know pounce on me and tear me apart. Really so you know, powerful. I just said, "See ya, <laughs> yeah, see ya, yeah. see ya, brother." Not, not and a, I run along thing. now, <laughs> and, then, and then I said, "I'll, I'll run I'll along cross, now." That's when I cross the, the street to the other side, <laughs> exactly into the sunset now, and I'll run along. Right, right. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced for tomorrow either, Tony. I, I just think that the pressure's gotten to the lads. Arteta's pretty fresh out of ideas. He's played Havertz all over he could. He's played Martin Elliott right wing. You know, you've seen him come on there. So I think Arteta knows the squad pretty well. He just won't stick with the combination that wins, and that's what's hurt us. He, he, he finds some way to tinker with the squad. You know, if, if it's fitting Kai Havertz in there – by God, he's going to get him in there, and I just yeah, think yeah. that he he's a, he he as well as Trussard can be impact players against Bayern Munich. They can be right if given the right circumstances. The stars align. Right. But with that said, they they're impact players that we've seen that have had an impact this season. So it, it would make just, in my opinion, just some sort of football logic to get them in the game, but don't start them. Let Martinelli and Jesus run, 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 cause confusion. Hopefully they bag a goal or two and just run those center backs to death. You've got to tire these guys out. I don't to, be know very, to be very sincere with you, Oregon. Oregon, well. uh, see, man, I, I've, looked, I, I've looked into several different alternatives, yeah, right. to which Arsenal could win this game, but I'm not seeing it, man. Right. All I see is just beating. We're going to be beaten, man. See, there's no chest. No chest. We're going to be beaten, man. And 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 I don't want to be part of that, you know, part of the crew that goes there to watch it. I, I don't want to see it because it's right. going to hurt me. The one against Aston Villa, like, it, like I nearly lost my sanity on that one. That, seeing another beating against Ban Minnick is just going to tip me over the edge. And I, right. and I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy to be used as a 
public show on on YouTube, you know, uh, when I do that because I'm I just I'm I just collapse. That's right. how bad I love this team, man. And for sure, well, when it hits me well, against it's, Aston Villa, man, it hit me hard. Yeah. No, to be very sincere, I considered after that evening. I reconsidered doing YouTube. I, I, I felt I was yeah. not going to do YouTube no more. But you know, no, when I checked it, I said, well. man, you know. <sighs> What about people that has you know you know really helped me you know on this channel you know oregon guna that has helped me out you know and you know what do i say to all these other people who have helped me out you know and got me over yeah, the right. line you know to the channel going, to take yeah. the channel to where it is right now and i just oh. give up like that but, you know that, that's just the only yeah. reason keeping me doing streams right now man if not I would have just stopped after that Aston Villa game because right. there is no need to do all these things. That, you know, when your team, oh my days, against Aston Villa at home, yeah, a home game to your former it's manager, it, it make it make sense. Like, I tried for the last hour. <laughs> there was no sense to be made of it. We had a capitulation. Our captain got subbed off. You know, we had Zinchenko in there. And there's two things right there that won't are, are conducive to winning the game. And Leon Bailey is a damn good footballer. Yeah, he's, he's good, man. He's, he's good, a man. top top winner. He's good, man. I would say he's, he's like world man. class. You know, he's does a you know, he's he good, plays man. for Jamaica, which is an obviously world beater. Oh, you know, we should be looking at some real killers in the in uh, uh, in the wings. Yeah. Uh, uh, We're looking know, at the summer Ralph transfer Ralph. window, right? I, we can talk about that for a minute before you go. I mean, I, from yeah. what I've read, we're linked right now, actually, pretty heavily to Raphael Leal. You know, Are you sure it's me, not one of these boot licking uh, uh, journalists, uh, journals uh, writing this it's, nonsense? It's, I've seen it in three because or four I, publications. But, but right, you don't believe it until they lift up the shirt. But I can almost see, as much as it pains me, that he would be a replacement for Martinelli. That would break my heart because I. Love Martinelli. I just think that he hasn't had the best season. See, and I, see, I don't man, want to see him on Nani, the bench. He's not love, want to bench. But again, now is not the time for love. Now is the time to oh, pick no. the pieces up and, 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 and be very hard on this place. Hit right. them hard way, way oh, hurt. Sully, because Sully they've Martinelli dropped the ball not going to exactly. fix anything. Bring all these players in. Bring them in. Winners, you know. Right. I, I would like to see Rafael Lau. I think he's a great player. But okay. again, he could just come in and make a lot better. Could just put him in the middle of the pitch and tell him to Right, and that's the second part is that I would rather, you know, I don't, I do not trust at this point in time, Edu and Arteta, to sign the right players that need to gel with the squad. And that's it, where I get worried. Like, we can be linked to Tom, Dick, and Harry, every top player in freaking European league, but I truly don't think Edu knows the European market that well, especially not as well as he knows the South American market for obvious reasons. But, you know, I just, you know, I, I don't think that the quality of player we want, we're going to either pay the money for or the quality of player we need. One, we're not going to pay money for, or two, I don't trust this manager. I, what I trust the manager more of is, coaching the talent out of them at this point, right? You bring Rafael Leal, he scores four goals, See, right? And he plays he plays in a way that he has never played before, let's say, at AC Milan in the four, five, six seasons he's been there. He comes, let's say, for instance, he comes to Arsenal, puts Martinelli on the bench, pushes Trossard further down the bench, and then how does Arteta going to coach him? You know, we could, that's the thing. We were all talking about, like, oh, Mbappe's coming, blah, 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 all that Shit. And it's like, well, that's great, but well, who's going to manage? I don't like, even trust this manager to put Rafael Lau in his best position. How about that? Exactly. Like, it, it, it's not even about even buying the players. I'm no more even scared about buying the players. That isn't even what scares me. It's even Italian if thinking. it's it's about if this manager would do the right thing and put the players in their rightful position. That's for them to mean. perform optimally, that's where I'm right. scared. So, yeah, look at Trossard, be. always on the bench. That's look the at Dennis McRow, useless on the bench. Look at Thomas Partey, redundant. Actually, in the grand scheme of things, right now, 
Jorginho is ahead of Thomas Partey in this team. Make that make sense. Yes. Uh, like just, everything, off, man, you know, to the substitution, to, to game management, game. because That's Saka is playing good. injured. I, I don't know, to the mentality of the team in general, dropping the ball when it really matters. You know, all these things, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. It's yeah, hard. it's hard. But, you know, it's hard. It's hard. To, it's, as I say, it's hard for Liverpool fans right now as well. They completely Big up small forward. It's Crystal Palace, you know, and we did too. You know, I, 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 I said it from the get go. In this late run of games, the City game was the only one we could afford to draw. We have to win out. I do think the title is out of our hands, but on the flip side of that coin is that there is the opportunity. You still have still, the hope. <laughs> I still have a glimmer of hope, for sure, for sure. I still have a glimmer of hope, you know, that their city could drop points. Big up, Rory. I don't think they'll lose, right? If city drops points, they'll draw, which means they obviously they still get a point and still continue, right? But I just I don't think they'll lose, and that's the problem. And I have no clue what we're going to do against United, Chelsea, and Tottenham. I <laughs> just saying those three names just puts a chill big up down CRT, my big up CRT. Even though we know that United is definitely not the United they have been, we know Chelsea is definitely not the Chelsea they have been. But Tottenham yeah. away is going to be a tough, tough, tough game. It's going to be a tough, tough game. It's going to be a, so, dude, they're know, going to want to beat us so bad. Know. Especially after drawing and even an Manchester home. United away from home, Not and, an easy and let's game. don't forget that ground. Yeah, yeah on on normal basis, yeah, they hate us. big teams. Yeah, they like, absolutely we've gone hate us. Football, so. they hate us. Yeah, they hate us, bro. It's going to be a hostile environment and more pressure on, on these kids, mm. right? Just added pressure, and that's True, been man. the problem. Is the pressure has been too much? For several squads, not just this one, over the last decade, at the start of April, it's 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 written in, written in the football stars. It's written on my day. All right, gonna hit it, hitting his brother, hitting his brother where it hurts. Think about the morning you woke up, bro, and you saw a world. You saw Arsenal with a world class squad. You saw Henri in there and Bird Camp and. In later years, you saw Giroud and Santa Cartola and Fabregas and Rob Van Persie. You got up in the morning, you put your robe on, you get your bowl of cereal, and you're like looking at the lineup going, we're going to fucking win today because we got Fabregas, Van Persie, and so-and-so in the squad today. But exactly. I haven't felt that way, bro, in years. Even in the late mm. banger years, I was not convinced of getting up in the morning, having my breakfast of fucking Fruit Loops to watch the Arsenal at <laughs> 7 in the morning, right? So fucking Fruit Loops, and we go out and put out a shit performance against Everton and lose 2-1 or something. You know, those okay. days aren't over, and that's what I think some of these newer Arsenal fans, they haven't lived that life yet. They haven't, they haven't lived, lived that, that life that yet. Life of losing and they the are the ones I pity. I'm already ball, used yeah. to this. I'm used yeah, to this. exactly. I, I pity this exactly. 17, 18, 20-year-olds. Dropping like, the ball I against Birmingham City. Shout out, Paul. Oh, my days. I pity them, man. If I felt that way on, uh, you know, Dropping on the Sunday, ball Tyson, how Tyson broken Bramble are these 17, 18-year-olds? I, I just have mercy on them on how they feel yeah, they and how their dreams have been broken the by this manager. <laughs> Look at Longhead Yeti. Just before we go, uh, Oregon Guna, yeah. you have to talk about this. Our fans on Sunday, what a disgrace. But again, at that. Uh, but again, I, I can't still slack them off. Some of this fan oh, base, yeah, the they end, got I, no, I know, no, I end. know, but some of these guys, yeah, they bought these tickets for 400 pounds, so oh, 200 pounds, 350 only to go and see the team. Myself. Oh, my days, only to go and see the team being disgraced by Aston. I was there, I would have sat down to the I'm last. I'm not saying second. they should leave, but I can really understand why I, I, I can't can see understand. the pain. Even me, I wanted well, I to just, leave the stream the and just go away. Yeah, bro, I understand I mean, we're talking, Tony, we're talking people are leaving at like the fourth and fifth level up from the pitch, bro. I mean, come on. I understand the people in the 300 level. 
They want to leave. The 200 level, some of them trickle out. But if you're almost pitch side, fucking stay. Stay. Yeah, you don't I, have to I, be I so. all necessarily. <laughs> but you can go there and just clap them off. I mean, it, the, it was two halves. One half, we played great in the first half, but we just could not score. And, you know, I'm watching the game. We're watching the game. And I'm telling myself, oh, it's one of those games where Arsenal have great possession. We have great movement, but we just can't score. I've seen it time and time again, just like many of you have. You know, and so second half comes on. It's like, okay, what are we going to do? Well, Arteta diverts again from what's worked in the past. And this is what Yeti's comment is. Yeah, I know you support your team to the end. I get that, man. But again, we fail to understand that many of this fan here, many of these fans here, they have PTSD. Do you guys think mental health is just something <laughs> you know we could play on? No, it's true, man. No, right. it, it, yeah, man. If you've never been down that road before, yeah, down that road of, of having right. lots of mental breakdowns due to certain things you would not understand where those people are coming from this right. is 20 seasons without a trophy we're talking about many of those guys aren't thinking properly and then you come down here you buy and the tickets are going higher in nottingham forest that, how, how often do they increase the tickets the tickets are so expensive and then you yeah. respect this fan base here yeah? some of them who leave the who left uh, you know after 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 that disgrace we see from this manager yeah and again what again see we are the ones saying that this fan base should take uh, uh, uh sh you know should help us out in getting this manager out of this football club and yet they're working and we're complaining no because when they, when some of them walk out this manager it's a bigger indictment on this manager no one wants to see that kind of football no one so, you know, I'm tired of it, man. Not talk of people who, who spent 200, 350 pounds to get a ticket yeah. to get in, only to see that crap, see your team being beaten by Aston Villa. No, we didn't spend 700 million uh, 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 euros to, to, to be beaten by these teams. Uh -huh. No, we spent it to win titles, and that's what right. we get. So, yeah, I understand it's a disgrace to leave. I get that. But, again, I would not be judge, jury, and executioner to those fans who left because seeing oh, what Aston Villa did all my days, it's disgraceful. I understand if they left. I understand. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying I understand. And I understand from a mental point. Bro, see, man, I saw my team lose against this Aston Villa, drop the ball, bottle the league yet again. Same time, same way, same way of capitulation. In two seasons, back to back, right? Like no even break for the mind. It's back to back. Come on, man! It takes its toll, man. It yeah. takes its toll. Yeah. It takes its toll. So why yeah. should we be? Should we blame all these fans who who, who spent money buying that football ticket uh, to go and watch that crap? If it's me, I'll leave the stadium. I don't care. Well, man. well trust me, I I wanted to go to London for the last two or three years. You know, the, the financially feasible. And there's part of me that kind of feels that way as well. If I go send four of my kids and four, my wife and two kids, I spend $1,600. We go get pan 3 nil by Villa. I travel all the way over. I would be I would be upset. Yeah, so no doubt, I, the financial, I, I, I get it. But that's sort of like, I guess, I hate to say, that's kind of the risk you take going to games, I guess. You know, I mean, you just... Especially Arsenal. Sometimes you just don't know what Arsenal is going to show up. But no, we had them on the ropes though Sunday, and that's why I think it's such a big loss. Such a big loss because it's just we had them on the ropes, man, like a boxer, and we were pounding them, and we just couldn't get the knockout. Exactly. You know, one goal would have been the knockout. I think if we scored one, we'd go on to score two or three because True. they will capitulate. And we have such a stubborn manager, such a proud manager. He's too proud. It's too stubborn. And, and, you know, the fans are out there watching these things, yeah, and seeing us just capitulate just like that, just due to the stubbornness of one manager. And, like, come on, man, it, it leaves a bit of taste in your mouth. And after you spend that big chunk of money, yeah, hard-end money, uh, you know, to spend on, yeah. on, on going to watch that game, and then instead of you going to see a title challenge, you're going to see us being washed up by Aston Villa. 
that it, 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 it's hard to take. It's not right. I've not condoned it. I'm just saying I understand. I understand them not wanting to watch it. I'm not going to watch the Bayern Munich game. People should understand that with me. That I'm doing it to protect my mental health. Because if I see another beating and maiming in an Allianz Arena, only God knows what's going to happen to me, man. <laughs> this time I'm going to go <laughs> smash my head on. I'm going to just smash my head on the computer. And, and, just, yeah. oh, I, I throw my and I don't want to exhibit me. behaviors that, that second goal some of my students are watching. I don't want them to look at this thing and say, oh, yeah, I was going to rip the TV from the wall after that second goal (laughs) Sunday. I was so mad. But, you know, the thing is, too, is, Tony, something something to uh, not brighten your day is that there's a real possibility we can finish third. (laughs) There's a real possibility. If Liverpool go on a streak, we're done. See, Oregon getting yet. See, we You've not just started watching the Premiership <laughs> two years ago or three years. You've seen this happen. Whenever Arsenal is losing, yeah, we're losing clusters. Uh, right. This is what this is. See, it runs like a lip moth. I've seen this movie play again and again. I've yeah, seen it before. Is. I saw it last right. year. No fan, no Arsenal fan, yeah, said last season we're going to win the title. I said it. Many Arsenal fans said, oh, no, no, no. Uh, you know, top four, top... I said we we're going to win the title last season. So imagine what happened last season. I still said, okay, good. I won Mikel Arteta out of the season, but you know what? Yeah, I will still back the team. Not the manager, but back the team. Same thing again. He's dropped the ball yet again. We've lost the title yet again. Like, which confidence? Like, what, what confidence do you want any to actually exude or show for you to know that he's a real fan or like what do you what do I do? Yeah, when you keep supporting and this manager keeps destroying every every bit of confidence that you should have. Man, it's it's, it's painful, man. It's painful, man. It's painful. I, I nearly shed tears on that after the game. And I don't want to be in that position publicly, man. Not to this Man United and 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 Man City fans, man. No, yeah, don't don't go on the show right now. Oh, I'm telling you, man. I nearly broke down, man. Because oh, ah. Oh. It's, it's fun. It's fun to do the shows off of you, but if you guys go in there and face some heat, bro. Especially from like like flawless and that United group. Oh oh flawless, they are waiting for me, but I said no, I'm not coming oh, today, man. Because oh. <laughs> they wanna they wanna steamroll me and <laughs> push me to the curb and you know make a public show of me, but you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I had to I had to, you know, I had to battle out of that one. Friday and yeah, you know, <laughs> slide around and yeah, just avoid. Whoop, whoop, not this show. <laughs> exactly, my <I> eloped <laughs> with my sanity <laughs> impact. <laughs> you ran from the groom. <laughs> Longer yet, he said, "Good thing you ain't a Forest fan, Tony. You wouldn't be here now." And yeah, I know, <laughs> but I'm an Arsenal fan. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> no, we don't handle ourselves with blows. <laughs> and he says, "Stick by your team." If you deserve the highs, then take the lows. Oh my days! But again, where where are the highs for the past twenty seasons? Where are the highs? Yeah, the big caps. Where are the highs? Well, no problem, man. I take everything. No problems. No issues, man. I'll take Shout out to Longhead. Yeah, yeah. Long yeah, he's our friend, our brother. Yeah, Oregon Gunny was saying something. Oh yeah, I'm just thinking like back how also he hasn't Arteta that is really cared much about the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. And I would take an FA Cup now. I would have taken an FA Cup this season. I would have taken one last season. I'll take one any season. But the thing is, is that, mm-hmm. you know, when you it's, – it's, and I don't know if he personally goes out there to lose those games, but you could tell it's a different arsenal. Like, there's just something about the way we play football in those competitions now. It's just not – it's just not it's good enough. Not, not, not good it. enough. Yeah, it's like you see out there. of the cup games. But Ugh. it's just like, but why though? Like I don't like like he doesn't have 
the pedigree to be so choosy. Like Yeti said, that's where our entitlement comes from. You know, he feels, and I, and I agree with, as well, a large part of the fan base, we're entitled to win this, but we're not. You know, we're just not going to win it every year. I mean, imagine what, like, Newcastle fans are going through. Like, last season they had a great season when they fit, think they finished 17th the year before that. Yeah, right. You know, and then this season is all going to crap, but yet they put four on Tottenham. Thanks for that. Um, you know, I, so there's highlights. I mean, there's going to be highlights, but the at the end of the day is that, you know, if Liverpool go on a run and City go on a run, we are going to finish third. And God I would help. I could, I could, I could not imagine. <laughs> you can't imagine that, right? I can just imagine you in the red room. I can imagine oh, you in the red room God. and smoking that smoking that blunt, man. Oh my days! Oh, You're gonna be angry as hell. Gonna be angry as hell. I'll be angry. I don't want to see that video. Sure, I'm going to be very, very upset. <laughs> gonna be pissed off. I will. And I, I'm wondering the kind of song you're gonna play in the red room that day, I'll man. Find it's one gonna that's be that's sad, man. Bolivar of broken mind. dreams. <laughs> broken Bolivar of broken dreams. I'm gonna play that one one day. Tony, hey bro, I gotta grab some lunch. Hey bro, yeah man, lunch, let's man. let's get thanks out of here, man. Me, man, thanks, man. Um, everyone, thanks for showing up today. Uh, uh you know, go subscribe to um, of course, Oregon Gunner's channel. Oregon, what do you got coming up, man? Talk to us, man. Before you um, go. God, this week, not too much going on. I think I'm just doing the normal American Idiot show with TJ and Connor on Friday. And I believe our guest is um Chelsea fan Carefree Lewis. I believe he's mm. a Part of like the troop who's pals with troops and <clears throat> flawless yeah. and those guys. So I think TJ's reached out to him and, and bringing him on Friday. If if it's not him, then it's somebody else. Uh, TJ make TJ and Connor make that shit happen. I just show up. So anyway, yeah, that's about all I got going on. And um, it's supposed to be beautiful weather here in Portland. So hopefully I'm gonna get outside here and go for a quick run. Get a bite Enjoy the weather, my brother, man. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the weather, weather man. man. Thank you. So other than that, yeah, what sure, are you man. up to, Tony? See, man, I'm not doing any of the shows until the yeah. game against Wolves comes up in the weekend. Mm -hmm. So uh, that should be the game I should be doing because uh, uh, the Finnish um, league, uh, I'm talking of the lower leagues and the middle leagues have already started mm -hmm. already. So I'm reffing in those ones also. So, you know, uh, oh. it's becoming more tedious right now. So, you know. Uh, streams will be, you know, will be coming slower right now because of mm -hmm. those stuff. And mind you, I still have my main job. Of course, I'm a teacher. You know that too. So yeah. you know, yeah. So it's a little bit difficult uh, uh, to just do everything all at the same time. So I'm gonna pick and choose the kind of streams I do right now. You know, because right. it's a choking time. If Arsenal yeah. can win me trophies, I can as well think of making money. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I, if we win trophies, Arsenal will get money. We can probably bring in the top, top striker. We'll see. Oh, no, wait, let me forget. We have Eddie and Kenya. Oh, my days. And by the way, one more quick note. If we bring Raphael Lowell in, I think we give him the 14. I think we do that, man. I think we do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And sell Eddie and Kenya. Get him off. Yeah. Or the 14 goes to Martinelli, but I don't know if he's quite deserved it. <laughs> exactly, man. <laughs> Long as anyway. he says, good timing on the rev job, bro. <laughs> big up, great stream. Yeah, big up to you, Long Ed Yeti, man. Has always supported me uh, uh, since I've known him. Go support Long Ed Yeti on his channel. Subscribe to his channel, guys. And, um, you know, yet it'd be nice to have one of these shows with you one of these days that, you know, there's time, man. Just yeah, yeah, okay. If, 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 because you know, long get yeti, you know, it comes with a chip, you know, he doesn't like yeah, showing up to any of our shows, you know, he picks and chooses the yeah, kind no, of shows he comes to. So, you know, I'll beg him to come to the show. So, yeti, please, the gauntlet has been dropped. Yeah, I, I, I would like to hear what he uh, says. After the said. Yeah, no, yeah. yeti, definitely. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are on the Arsenal Bayern Munich game afterwards. So, if you're free next Tuesday, 11, uh, 7, 7 30, your time, yeah, give me a shout, bro. Love to have All you right. on with us. All right. Love Thanks again, Tony. You have All a great right. Thanks, evening. People. Get some rest. Shout out to everyone in the chat. Um, shout out Arsenal Football Club. We have to get it done, but it's not looking good. And I'm going to go back on my 3 1. So <laughs> thanks again, Tony. Fun times, bro. We are out. Peace. Peace. Peace.